Hi, I'm here to wrap up our set on parallel RLC videos with step three. Now step three I think is the most versatile method for parallel RLC circuits and it is using power. So we have to keep in mind a couple of the basic rules about power in both series and parallel circuits which is our watts can add up. PT is going to equal P1 plus P2 plus P3. Also our reactive power is going to add up. The reactive power in branch 1 plus the reactive power in branch 2 plus the reactive power in branch 3. Keeping in mind, sometimes they're occurring that 180 degrees apart. So in this case, I like to take my circuit and I like to do a power triangle for each individual branch as well as I like to then combine all that information onto one power diagram for the circuit. So here what I would do is I would look at the circuit, I would say okay, 16 amps, only a resistor. I'm going to use my power triangle for that branch would look like this and I'm going to say P1 is going to equal I1 squared times the resistance in branch 1. Now in this branch because it's a pure resistor you could use I1 times V1 or you could use V1 squared divided by R but this is my favorite formula so I'm going to use that. And in this case I get 3840 watts. So I'm going to actually put that information over here. Uh, 3840 watts. Then I move along to my coil. Now my coil is always going to be the toughest part because it has both the resistive and the reactive components. But we know it's going to create its own little triangle. Up here I'm going to go P2, power 2, equals I2 squared times the resistive component of the coil. Now it's very important that I'm using the current flowing through the coil and then only the resistive component of the coil which gives me 2559.9 watts. Now I can go a couple places from there. I can use my power factor from my previous triangle when I did the Z but my preferred way is I'm going to use the current squared times the reactive component. So I'm going to go Q2 equals I2 squared times X in this case and I get 1,100 or 1,919.9 VARS. Perfect. Now uh, two ways from here. I can do some Pythagorean's theorem Q squared plus P squared equals S squared or I can go S equals I2 times V2. 240 volts times 13.333 amps. Either way I should come out around 3199.9 VA. So I can take my horizontal value and my vertical value and I can come put them over here. I got 2559.9 watts and I got 1919.9 bars. My last step is the power in the third branch across my capacitor. Because it's a purely reactive circuit, I know I'm looking at only VARs. In this case, I'm going to go Q3 equals I3 squared times the X in that branch, 6 amps squared times 40 ohms gives me 1440 VAR. Now I know the capacitive reactive VARs and the inductive reactive VARs are occurring 180 degrees out of phase, so that goes up here, 1440 VAR. So if we wanted we could call this QXC and we can call this QXL. Now what happens because they're occurring that 180 degrees out of phase we end up with a Q net. In this case I know my QXL is bigger so I know that my hypotenuse uh, this triangle is going to be going this direction. I can figure out my Q net by going 1919.9 minus 1440 which gives me 479 0.9 VARS as my Q net. 
My power total is going to be P1 plus P2. In this case, PT equals 6399.9 watts. So now I've created for myself a power triangle for the circuit. 6399.9 watts, 479.9 vars. I can do Pythagorean's theorem and I can solve for my S if I want. Or if I want, I can also go I total times V total or E total of the circuit and I can get it that way as well. Whichever way I do it, I should end up with 6,417.9 VA. Perfect. Now the very last step with all of these circuits is my power factor. It's going to be watts divided by VA. So I go 6,399.9 divided by my VA and I get a power factor of 0 0.997 which is actually a very good power factor. Well, I hope that helps. Um, it's really, really important to remember that you can add up watts and you can add up VARs, but you should never be adding up the VA. Thanks for watching.